Just like on YouTube, to give your brain some new food. Hello people and welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time on the channel, a special welcome to you. I ask that you check out the rest of my videos. If you like what you see, give them a thumbs up, leave a comment, but more than anything, I'm asking that you subscribe to the channel. Today's video is titled, Who Was Jamaica's Michael Mandley? And that is not only a title, but it is a question that I'm asking. And when I say it's a question that I'm asking, I'm actually asking this question, people. I'm asking the question for myself, but more than anything, I'm asking the question so that the answers could educate younger Jamaicans who were born after the reign or the life of Michael Mandley. While I'm doing this video, I'm also going to share my little knowledge that I know of Michael Mandley, and I'm not talking about knowledge that I acquired in a book or anything that I've studied outside of the life of Michael Mandley. I'm talking about my real life existence during the time Michael Manley was alive and during the time Michael Manley reigned as a Jamaican politician. Yesterday I did my first YouTube live stream and I want to take the time out to thank everybody who participated in the live stream. I actually enjoyed it very much and I enjoyed chit chatting with everybody and hearing some subject that they were concerned about and some questions that were asked. I answered them as best as I could but bottom line all in all I really enjoyed and I appreciate you guys not to say that I don't appreciate my subscribers who weren't online at the time that I was live because I did get some of the messages that said they actually missed it and I feel just as bummed that you guys missed it because I would have loved to have a banter and a chit chat with you even though we didn't catch up then I look forward to catching up with you guys in the future but it was during the live that one or two of my subscribers brought up the subject of Michael Manley and I realized that in response to that a few of my subscribers have their own knowledge about Michael Manley and I thought to myself well that knowledge that wisdom that factual insight could actually help other viewers of my channel to actually know more about Michael Manley because um, it would be a shame that Michael Manley was a good person that get a bad rep during or after his lifetime so first and foremost I'm gonna tell you guys what I know personally about Michael Manley I know that Michael Manley is the son of Norman Manley and Edna Manley Norman Manley was Jamaica's first First premier and Michael Manley was Jamaica's fourth Prime Minister. What I know about Michael Manley, he was initially an editor and a columnist, a Jamaican college student who also served in the Royal Canadian Air Force. So I know that much about Michael Manley. First and foremost, you guys gotta understand that I was born in the year of 1971. And Michael Manley led the People's National Party from 1980 to 1989. So if you compare my age to the reign of Michael Manley, it is clear that by the time I was an adult, 18 years old, Michael Manley had retired from politics. But here's the thing that I was trying to explain to one or two people on my live yesterday about my knowledge to Michael Manley. My knowledge to Michael Manley was pretty much secondary knowledge. So I was a child during his reign and I pretty much had to listen to what the adults around me were saying about Michael Manley and Edward Siaga. What I did know is that Michael Manley was regarded as the people's prime minister. And as I got older, I kind of understood more how politics work and I understood the framework of the Jamaican Labour Party versus the framework of the People's National Party. So I will always say that the People's National Party are really for the common Jamaicans and the Jamaican Labour Party is not. So um, to paint a better picture, and to mirror it to other countries' politics that we're familiar with, I would say the Jamaican Labour Party of Jamaica reflects on the United States of America Republican Party and the People's National Party of Jamaica reflects on the Democratic Party of the United States of America. So in the United States of America it's considered that the Democratic Party is more for the minority. So this is what I'm saying about the People's National Party. It's founding, it's founding um, 
principles were to support the smaller people, the common people of Jamaica. So I learned that on my own. But at the same time, in contrast to that knowledge that I learned, to be honest, Michael Manley was painted to me as a child to be not such a good leader in comparison to Edward Siaga. Again, I was a kid and this was the information that was drummed to me. And one of the main reasons why Michael Manley was not seen as a good leader was his affiliation with Fidel Castro in Cuba. While Edward Siaga was allies with Ronald Reagan, Michael Manley was bosom buddy with Fidel Castro. And the thing that Jamaicans feared about the relationship of Michael Manley and Fidel Castro was because Fidel Castro ran Cuba under communist rule. So Jamaicans fear that Michael Manley would adopt that principle and put Jamaican people under oppression. So as a child, that came to my mind. That's the information that was sent to me. And I thought to myself, I'm not feeling this Manley person. Even though I was just a child, I was still a great thinker, a super thinker. I would call myself that overthink things as a child. But Michael Manley was not painted to me as a saint or the people's prime minister. Personally, by the time I was, say, 16, 17 years old and had a political opinion of Jamaica's prime minister, the truth to the fact was that I did not like Michael Manley nor Edward Siaga. I did not like them and as petty and as small-minded as this may sound, the reason why I didn't like Michael Manley or Edward Siaga as leaders was simply because of their color. As a child, I saw them as two white men leading a black country. And you have to understand that um, my knowledge at that age of slavery and the oppression that black people have endured across the world, I couldn't see them as Jamaicans. I just see them as white versus black. There were two white men leading uh, a cast of black people. So there was a mistrust from my point of view as a teenager for the simple fact that they weren't the same color as me. So I don't want anybody to twist that and try to say uh, it's being racist or anything. It's, it's nothing like that. Um, I was a child. I was just... I probably had just watched the movie Roots. So after watching the movie Roots, I only see two things. Black people, we are one. And white people, they're another. I didn't care who was Lebanese from who was British spawn. It didn't matter to me. As long as you weren't black, I just didn't trust you leading a country of black people. And Edward Siaga and Michael Manley, in my opinion, they weren't black. They were white people that was leading us and there was no real sense of security under their leadership for me. Michael Manley married Beverly Manley. And Beverly Manley, I actually remember Beverly Manley on a TV program in Jamaica called Where It's At. It was like Jamaica's version of MTV rap. So she was like a, a VJ. She was like um, a video jockey that um, kept us entertained in the daytime. Beverly Manley was black and black as they could be. For the simple fact that Michael Manley married Beverly Manley, um, as a young kid, I kind of saw that, well, maybe he kind of see us as one. I mean, if, if he's going to take a black woman as his wife, then maybe he's one of us. So you can understand when my mind started to change in view of Michael Manley. But you have to also understand that I was born and I was raised in Kingston, Jamaica. And when I say Kingston, Jamaica, I'm talking about Dunga Town. I wasn't born Dunga Town, but I was born close enough. I mean, the Victoria Jubilee Hospital is pretty much Dunga Town. But um, as I was a, a toddler growing up in Jamaica, I attended Central Branch all Age School. And anybody who knows Central Branch all Age School, knows its location and know that Central Branch is right next door to Jonestown and Jonestown has always been a People's National Party stronghold. So I'm talking about Jonestown, Trenchtown, um, Anna Town, Craig Town. But here's the thing about all these towns that I actually just named. 
They are shanty town. They are zinc fence town. They are, they are people who are pretty much living in squalor. I don't know about today, but I know back in the 80s, um, it was an ugly sight to see, even though as a child, and that's what I was born and introduced to, it was still an ugly sight to see. So the People's National Party stronghold was pretty much zinc fed, zinc fences, and like board gates except for Jungle, but Jungle came later and Jungle was also nicknamed Concrete Jungle because there were concrete houses and they were actually PNP stronghold as well. But Craigtown versus say, um, what's that area called again? Fletcher's Land. Um, <laughs> if, if you should see Fletcher's Land versus Craigtown, you realize that is just two different kind of ghettos because Fletcher's Land is a JLP stronghold, but Fletcher's Land, even though it's a ghetto, um, the houses um, are pretty much like Tivoli Garden. They actually look like houses that people would appreciate living in. They were made out of bricks and mortar. They were actually made out of slab roof. They were reasonable accommodation for people to live. So I guess what I'm trying to point out here that even though the stronghold of Jamaica Labour Party and the stronghold of the People's National Party were both ghettos, the Jamaica Labour Party ghettos has always looked better. Um, another stronghold for the Jamaican Labour Party was um, most parts of Mountain View Avenue. So I'm talking about places like Jake's Road. If you see Jake's Road, you would actually have the envision and see the reality of what it once was. It was a top-notch suburbia area before it got ran over by um, hoodlums and wannabe gangsters and politicians versus say um rock fort which is a pnp stronghold when you when you compare the two the people's national party neighborhood are usually more dilapidated in appearances but like i'm saying either way i didn't support edward siaga i didn't support michael manley well i couldn't support him because i was a child but as a child, I still had a position where I could have um, a favorite or a feeling towards. So even though adults around me were saying Michael Manley wants to oppress Jamaican people, um, I remember it was during the time of Michael Manley's reign when um, they used to marry food. So if you wanted rice at the shop, you have to buy something ridiculous like bleach, even if you didn't want it. Or if you wanted bread, you have to buy something ridiculous like kerosene oil and the two didn't go together. And I remember during that time, you know, my mom was not very happy. And I, I wouldn't say my mom was in favorite of one party to the next. I just think my mom was disgusted with the treatment of being a Jamaican in Jamaica. And for that reason, um, she migrated it and took all of us with her. One of the most iconic moment of seeing Michael Manley and Siaga together was when Bob Marley was shot and injured and he had a concert of unity in halfway tree and Michael Manley and Edward Siaga was joined hands by Bob Marley. It's an iconic picture that was taken um, at a concert in halfway tree. However, I didn't think that did much for Jamaican politics then and I didn't think it did much for Jamaican politics in the future. Anyway, like I said, I decided to bring up the subject of who was Michael Manley because I would like to learn more, not from books, but from the testimonies of you guys. And who knows, I may end up writing a book using your testimonies. So be as accurate as you can, even though I will re-research whatever you write, but be as accurate as you can so I could make something exceptional out of this book that I may write. At the same time, I would like your answers to be just as accurate and transparent where researchers can reflect it as true, where we can educate other people that might be curious. Michael Manley is a strong and long statue in the island of Jamaica's history, and he will always be. So I'm sure that in schools, um, in the future, subjects surrounding his name, surrounding his family, surrounding his ambition, etc., etc., will be a part of a curriculum. And your answers here on YouTube could actually make it 
easier for a student in Jamaica or students in Jamaica to ace that test and become more aware. Let me know what you think about this video, people. Like I say, it was a thought that came to my mind and this is what my platform is here for, to talk about Jamaica, Jamaicans, and anything or anywhere that's affiliated with Jamaicans and Jamaica. As always, do not be afraid to give it a thumbs down if you think it's not worthy and do not be afraid to give it a thumbs up if you think it's worthy because on this channel, I accept disagreement and agreement because at the end of the day, each one teach one people. You've reached the end of my video and that in itself is a support that I truly appreciate. And while I'm at it, I will take this time out to let you guys know other ways that you can support my channel. The first and simplest way that you can support my channel is by giving this video a thumbs up. And the second and most important way that you can support this channel is by hitting that subscribe button and subscribe to my channel and follow me through my YouTube journey. Other ways that you can support my channel is by going to my Teespring online store and buying some of my merch. And another way that you guys can also support this channel is by joining me in Patreon to give me a contribution to support what I do on YouTube and what I do to entertain you guys. Once again, I wanna thank you guys for your continuous support and ask that you join me, Ian T. Sebast, on YouTube and see where my journey takes me. Until next time, people. Peace.